Hello everyone, welcome back to episode 20 of We the Revolution. It's another day in our life. We just signed women equality rights. Let's hope the men don't hate us for that. So maybe that's what the news will tell us. Maybe that is your path to divinity. Like the Hindu goddess Sarashvati, you should focus on wisdom and peace. Oh, okay, that was because I let the soldier in peace. Nice. So my kindness was kind of rewarded. I mean, it didn't give me any penalties, so I guess. Dear citizen, we are incredibly thankful. For the first time, we have the feeling that someone is listening to us. We shall help the men to fight. The women of Paris. Okay. Why not? Who are you? Marc Pini is a 42-year-old widower and a master of gunpowder production. The craftsmen employees like the craftsmen's employees like him. He is generally respected and he has never been in trouble with the law. Yet two of his female employees have accused him of rape. Oh no! Now we have some. Now we get rape cases and all those women equality cases or what? Oh no! Because of the current high demand for gunpowder in Paris, the shop is working day and night and employs twice as many people as usual. Citizens Vaganet and Bach have been working there for only a few weeks and had not met before. Marc Pinet allegedly assaulted both of them during their night shifts in a storehouse behind the mill. They testified that he threatened them with a knife and ordered them to enter the storehouse and get undressed. After he finished, they gave both of them he gave both of them a few copper coins. They only dared to denounce him after a few days when they found out about each other's terrible experiences. We wish to express our solidarity with the defenders of Paris and ask for the quick resolution of Marc Pinet's trial. Gunpowder is currently more important to us than gold. Oh crap. So he's important to like our cause to surviving because he's a producer of gunpowder but he also raped two women. Now we have to decide his fate. So what is this defense thing? I mean, could the mill be a trap because it was a storehouse behind the mill? What is this defense? Could it be defense like in in his defense or it, for us? He produces gunpowder, so maybe we shouldn't... Let's just try it. No, that was the trap. Okay. Maybe it was in, in his defense that he gave them money? Or was it his method? I don't know. Or maybe, okay, I guess rape belongs to the... Rape could be the method and the victim. Let's go with the method. Oh no, let's go with the victim first. Yes. The mill probably is the method maybe because they work at the mill. Yes. So what are the copper coins? Defense? Ma like, is it maybe like the copper coins are to be understood like in his defense he paid them. But, I mean, that's not really anything. Was it his method too that he gave them money? Yes. Okay. Let's put the copper coins to the victim too. Yes. Okay. And the mill belongs to the victims as well. There is nothing in his defense? Okay. <sighs> oh well. Are you Citizen Pini? That I am. You have been accused of rape by two citizens. This is a misunderstanding. I paid them what they were due. Why are they now holding a grudge against me? Did they ask you for that money? If they didn't, they wouldn't have put it in their pockets, would they? They claim that you threatened them with a knife. I always carry it, but I didn't threaten anyone. Oh no. Or is this some kind of... Is this something fabricated? This is a fabricated story. Did the women make this up? This is a false rape claim. Oh no. Now I have to decide. Okay, oh, let's ask. Citizen Buck, please come closer. Night shifts at a powder mill does not sound like work for women. There is a high demand for powder, so they pay good money for the night shifts. Did you need money? Who doesn't? Everything is so expensive now. Did Citizen Pinay offer you money in exchange for satisfying his urges? No, Monsieur Le Judge, he just came with the knife. Did you take the money? I have it with me. If you like, you can give it to some poor children, Monsieur Le Judge, or just shove it down that man's throat. Why did you accept it in the first place? I don't know. Everything happened so fast. I barely even remember putting my clothes back on. I guess why did you wait? Why did you wait so long before making the denunciation? I was afraid. Did you continue to work after the incident? Yes, I really need the money. I have young brothers and my father suffers from breathing troubles and can't work. No wonder she went with the master for a couple of sous. 
What made you change your mind? Even my father said that I should let it go. But then I saw how Marie, I mean Citizen Vagani, was looking at him. And I realized that I wasn't alone. To do it by yourself is hard, but when there's two of you... You understand what I'm talking about, don't you? Would you like to comment on that? I always went to that comfortable brothel a few minutes from the factory. Now it's closed. What am I supposed to do? Is that a confession? There. How long have you been working in a factory? All my life, Mr. Lejarch. I started as an apprentice, so I even remember when we switched to steam. Can you describe how gunpowder is made? You have to mill the ingredients really fine using special rollers, though sometimes people wrongly call them grinders. Then what? You mix everything according to the proportions and then add a little water to the mixture. Then you squeeze it through a special scythe that lets through tiny lumps. It does not sound like a complicated process. Yeah, did you hear that in the audience? So can anyone take his job now so I can execute him? I'm not appreciated because it's difficult, but because every day the number of employees leaving work needs to be the same as the number of those who entered it in the morning. In a place like that, it's really easy to cause an explosion. Yet some days your employees leave work disgraced. Damn, Tinville. Good women don't come to work in a factory. The ones I hire have already gotten themselves disgraced. Well, dude, this does make you look guilty a lot, so... I guess I know what I'm going to do. If you were ready to pay for love, why did you threaten those women with a knife? I didn't threaten anyone. Why would he lie? Then why have they accused you? How would I know? They probably want more money. You're facing the guillotine, not a fine. Why do you carry a knife around the factory? It's good to have one. It comes in handy when you need to lever something or check the quality of powder. Did you have it during the incident? Yes, but I did not take it out. You could have threatened them without showing it. If they're stupid, you can scare someone with a shoehorn. You took citizens Buck and Vagani to the storehouse behind the mill. Why there? We keep sacks there and you can lie on them comfortably. How loud is the mill? Quite loud. Loud enough to drown out screams? Is that not obvious? Love needs a little privacy. Okay. He's right. Didn't ask you. Why did you not invite them to your place after work? You would have had even more privacy. Mm hmm. Pardon? I never thought of it. <laughs> and they did not suggest it when you politely spoke to them before the act? As I thought, there was no conversation. These women accuse you of a horrible crime. Is there anything you would like to say in your defense? Do you know women, Monsieur Le Judge? They are never sure what they want. Oh no, you're dying. Huh? I am sure they did not want to be raped. I have to agree. <laughs> Maybe I was a bit straightforward, but is that really so bad? They didn't yell or cry and they took the money. What's the problem? <laughs> Do I really have to explain it to you? They wanted it at first, but then they got scared their bellies might swell and their husbands might find out easier to blame the guy, no? Because everyone always feels sorry for the women, and so what if I lose my head? Yeah, but you admitted that you took them to some place where they where someone wouldn't hear their screams and No, there is something really strange about this, and you know, if there was if this was the times where you could people in prison, then I would put you into prison probably. But you know what? That's Nah, it's deaf. I know that the common folk will hate me now because I kill I, I behead someone with Although no, they weren't really a fan of the of the women's rights thing in the beginning, so maybe they hate me because of that too. And maybe it's because they agree with him. Colin Courtial and Egide Bachelot secretly bought two muskets and a few kilograms of lead to make bullets. We found the royalist journal Les Actes de Apotre in the apartment of one of the potters. Of the plotters. Of course, they accused claim that they planned to go hunting. Hey, we need, we need weapons. Sister Ségolène and Solène Aubert tricked the farmer fiancé tricked the former fiancé of one of the girls to visit their apartment where they imprisoned and tortured him. They hit him, poured boiling water on the man's perineum and burned him with a poker. All that as punishment for his infidelity. That's not really nice. Marlene Roussel, a young wife, had sexual intercourse with her husband's friend. When caught red-handed and forced to go to the nearest station with an officer, she offered herself to him in the form of a bribe. Oh, 
Oh! Well, I don't know. Jeez. Mm, no, I don't want to kill her for that. I mean... Of course what she did wasn't right, but... I don't know, it's nothing to hold a trial for, right? Did the confin- Well, no. I mean, he did- No, he didn't. Was his act counter-revolutionary? I guess not. Why was the victim working? Uh, she had to provide for her sick father and brother. Why was the defendant carrying a knife to check the quality of the powder? I guess. Did the victim accept money for the intercourse? Yes. He who hurts one Parisian woman hurts us all. Send him to the guillotine. I have nothing to add. A specialist killed over such a trivial thing? Well, it's not really that trivial, you know. I wonder who will make powder for our cannons now. Well, every one of you just heard how it's done, so get to work, people, huh? Stop sitting in my courtroom all the time. Start working. Make some gunpowder. Ugh. So, now that I know that holding speeches in front of the guillotine doesn't really um, adapt to the case, I just gonna skip this today. Bastards, just wait until you run out of gunpowder, you'll be sorry. So what shall we do? Shall we do some... Maybe do some barricades? Maybe this will help us. Although I don't know how. <sighs> well, it's another day of fighting, I guess. Okay, we got some troops. Oh well, um... Who I'm going to do next? Well, these guys... Oh well, he has a large troop and we only have seven foot soldiers, so... But hey, after... I guess... This guy doesn't really do anything good because we weren't that badly equipped the last time, so maybe I should just try. I guess I will fail because, oh Jesus, they have cannons too. Again, can't put any one here. No, the garrison is full. So this is still safe. Just we have to fight. Okay, so we're not really effective, but hey, let's see. I hope they don't kill all my cans now. Oh my god, hey, I really could make it. I could win this. Yes, I'm winning this. Yes. Thank you, my cannons. Yes. 
my cannon saved the day. Nice! Okay. Okay, we saved one thing. We saved one place. That's good. That's good. Now I'll have to restock this place too. Because we will have a lot of enemies coming from there. Um, well then, let's fight this one as well. There's like a lot of time going lost because we're doing fights now. How, what has what does this have to do with any of my family now? Seriously, he's just slaughtering a whole city. But okay, hey. Whatever you say, brother. Oh great, they lost that too. Oh well, um... I guess the positive thing now is that there's less districts to defend. I guess I made the mistake of just... of um putting one troop in each district in the beginning instead of concentrating on this area first to hold this because if I, I held this longer this one would have been safe but I didn't know that in the beginning so I have my two winning cannons here so I guess I should improve something there too huh what do I do I mean this one is pretty well looked after this one looks okay too i guess hmm this one is infantry so maybe there's one second row would be good to have too so let's put him here this one is artillery so maybe we would need something to protect it maybe let's put the, these guys here these need a front row so let's put them let's put these guys here Okay, this one has a second row and this one has a first row. This one is full. Hmm. I'm thinking, I'm, I'm thinking about putting the musketeers either here or here. Wait, this is infantry, so you know what, let's put them here. Okay. <sighs> So, when will our relief come, finally? Uh-oh, I'm losing really big here. Ugh, crap. Okay. Let's hope that it's over soon. Hmm, who are you? Family of a 33-year-old baker, Bastien Baudet, moved into an empty house near Section de Piquet. They told the investigator that a few days earlier the house had been hit by a mortar around and the shell's impact broke the ceiling and one of the walls. A few days later, Baudet and his family were discovered by the owner of the seemingly, seemingly empty, empty house, Citizen Soule. It turned out that he had not left the house permanently. Several days earlier, a fire broke out in the neighborhood and the Soule family temporarily ran away to stay with relatives in the suburbs. The legitimate owner of the house soon realized that his silver cutlery was gone, his food supplies were consumed and some of the furniture had been chopped up and burned in the fireplace. During the interrogation of both families, we learned that the first meeting between the two sides ended with a struggle won by Baudet. Only with thanks to the intervention of the guard was Citizen Soleil able to be rid of the unwanted tenants and the impetuous baker was detained. Oh no, okay, here's a burglary, destruction, theft and assault. 
Well, I guess they were desperate to find help, to find a home. Ooh, okay, there's two traps here, and there's... Well, maybe the mortar around belongs to the course of events. Yes. The struggle was also probably a course of events. Maybe the silver cutlery is something that the victim claims? No, okay, that was a trap. Oh, great. <sighs> so one of this is a trap. And I mean, something has to belong to the... Something has to be by the victim, right? I mean, the empty house could be... Could belong to the course of events, but then I wonder what... Is there anything... There wouldn't be anything that belongs to the victim, right? The chopped up furniture could also be something that the victim claims. And what? Let's try it. No. Do we have any questions now to ask? Is your name Bastien Baudet? Yes, Monsieur Le Judge. You moved into Citizen Zolier's apartment without permission. There's lots of empty apartments in Paris. We chose one of them because we didn't have anywhere else to go. A resourceful man will always find a way to care for his family. Did you ask anyone for permission? There was nobody to ask. It was empty, so we went inside. I couldn't let my children sleep under the open sky. Can I ask him any questions now? Okay. You know, I think I want him to go free. Is it true that your house was destroyed by artillery fire? Indeed. Was anybody killed? My father-in-law was crushed by rubble and timber. Thank God that nothing happened to the children. A mortar around destroyed your house, and yet you responded by destroying Citizen Soleil's house? Are you talking about the furniture? I had to keep my children warm at night, and I didn't know where they stored the firewood. Was there no brushwood nearby to burn? Was I really supposed to look for it when there was wood just lying around? Paris is dying and they worry about furniture. Oh no. Oh no, no, no. I don't want to murder him. No! I will lose a lot of reputation if I don't. And I need a reputation, right? Let's I'll just ask him. Tell me more about the struggle between you two. Was it about the cutlery? You know, that fellow just came inside yelling and looking around the house. I didn't know if he was really the owner or not. Do not pretend you were guarding another person's possessions. I'm just saying that he walked inside and started yelling. So you wanted to kick him out. Actually, he grabbed me by the shirt when I was chopping up the stairs, so I threatened him a little. That's all I did. How kind of him. <laughs> did you hurt him? As soon as he realized what was going on, he disappeared. We only heard footsteps on the stairs and a door slam. I want him to go free. I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna let him go. I'm sorry, jury. I think in the end, Alexis Fidel is going to die anyway. I think we're going to end on the guillotine. I guess he did. Hold on, no. Wait, partly? Yes. Was this a counter? No. Why did the Buddhists leave their house? It was destroyed. Did Baudet talk to anyone before entering the house? He did not talk to anyone. Why was the house empty? The host had fled from a fire. At least that should give us some points, right? Considering the circumstances, I cannot punish you. I can only hope that you will defend Paris with as much as determination as you defend your family. To let people go is one thing, but tell me, where will they stay? And does it matter what we have to say? Yeah, it does. Just not now, okay? Oh, my reputation is minus seven again. Oh, how great. Maybe that's also because people are dying in the streets. Probably. How are you feeling today, Bernard? What do you see? Pardon? I asked what you, what you see. You, my son. No, you can see a monster, mutilated, humiliated, and stripped of his dreams. That is not true. There is much that still awaits you. What is it that awaits me? A career? Look at me. I'll never be able to play again. You wanted that, didn't you? Say it. What the hell? How is this our fault? Never. I don't believe you, and I never will again. You used to say that you would take care of us, but nobody can stop this madness, this terrible revolution, or this damned family with its corpses rising from their graves to harass the living. 
Hey, to be honest, you were a part of the revolutionists before. Just saying. Or maybe it is a sign of the times. What about the people who were decapitated because of you? Will they also return to kill us? Maybe the king himself will open his tomb to pull off my legs since I still have them. Oh, hey! Seriously? You asked me to kill Sylvie Pash. You really did. Openly. No, you didn't ask me. You threatened me. You wanted her dead. You wanted me to use my power to kill her. So, hey, don't act like this is all me. I am sorry, son. I truly am. I'm sorry, too. Now, excuse me. I need to think of ways to waste the rest of my life of mine, which you have spared with your cruel mercy. What the hell? I'm sorry, but... I, I'm i sorry for him, I really am, but I don't understand why this is my fault. I mean, of course, we did our bad stuff, but seriously, I, I don't get why our family is so shocked by that. I mean, after all, they were when I had the power back then, my Bernard and my wife were pretty happy to abuse it if they, were, if they would see fit to it, so... I don't know if it helped a lot. Uh, maybe I'm gonna go with safe path. I need to save more people. Oh, I didn't. I'm losing a lot of reputation. I don't get any more cannons. The printing house, it's in, from now on, every time you lose a physician in a fight, you will be able to recruit a new one here. Oh wait, I never really used the physicians. Maybe I should try this now? Oh, I can't, because this one's blocked already. Hmm. Oh well. I mean, we should win this, right? I still can't trust that other guy. I mean, he wants to be a general, but no. He lost my last district. Let's just fight this one too. We're gonna lose again, aren't we? Okay, phew, that was good, that was good. 
Saved a lot of people here. So now I have to fight this battle and I suppose this won't be this this won't end up good. Let's go. Let's just collect our defeat and Oh Jesus, this is a huge troop that they have there and our troop is rather tiny. Maybe we should kill their front lines, I don't know. That is a pretty bad ratio, 3,000 killed and 800 saved. Sorry people. Okay, he's leading with killed people. I don't really understand why my brother would want that. Why my brother would want to kill a whole city. I don't know. I guess nobody knows. These guys need... I don't have a cannon sadly, so... Maybe I'm just gonna put some more of him, of these guys here. And then I need to reinforce these guys. Can I set them here? Yes, I can. Okay, and he's just getting... Oh wait, I can't. Oh, I will only have to... I have to put him there because... Okay, I can place one here and then the other one belongs here. Okay. How nice of you, wife. I am leaving. I need to take our son away from the sick city. Do not try to find us. Okay. Sorry, I guess. Okay. But well. Oh, he looks like a child in his uniform. And from his face, I guess. Well, we are going to look at this trial in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.